of reality here for a minute, if you don't mind. Alex, can you jump in here? Me? Do the, yeah. Do, do, do the people really want to hear Dean Spanos interviewed by me? No. On the radio what? in LA? Unless? On, on the Ram station because I've got the power of ESPN behind me. Is that really what pull, people want to hear? Can I pull the curtain back a second? Go ahead. We were on a conference call yesterday with your people in LA. Mm -hmm. Where did this gentleman list that particular football team on topics that you should be talking about? Um, was I on the call at that point? No, but I think <laughs> you can take a guess. Okay. Well, I'm sure he said nobody talks about the chargers in LA. He said, you don't talk about the chargers. Yeah. Here's the thing. When I get on seven ten tonight, and for those of you that don't know this story, can I, should I back this up a little bit? Like, should I let people know what's going on here? Or do people, should I assume that people know what's going on? I don't think people really know what's going on. Why would they know what's going on? What do you do think? Um, um, <laughs> um, I don't know. Just, I, I always assume that no one knows anything. That's mm -hmm. the way I, I operate. Okay. So, so then most people don't. Okay. So then I'll just tell you the story. So um, when we were at the Super Bowl this year, there were lots of people kind of poking around at that time. And then COVID hit and, you know, all those people that were poking around about potential radio shows on national networks, it all went away. And then um, we, uh, I got a call from uh, ESPN Los Angeles and they said, hey, would you fill in? Because do you guys know who Will Kane is? Unfortunately, yes. I really never knew much about Will Kane, but I guess he was more of a conservative political talker who ESPN had one time hired and he did sports talk, but from a very conservative political opinion. So he left ESPN radio and he went to Fox News to become like a weekend correspondent kind of thing. And so they said, look, we, we want to have a local show in place of the Will Kane show until ESPN makes all their changes to their lineup. So they called me and they said, hey, would you want to do this? And I said, Sounds like a hell of a lot of fun to me, you know, uh, ESPN, Los Angeles, LeBron, Lakers station, Rams, uh, some angel games, LAFC games. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Let's do it. So, you know, I've been friends with George Sedano up there for a really long time. And there's a few other people that work there that at one time were old 1090 employees. Alan Sliwa used to sell for 1090. This guy named David Kent used to sell for 1090. They're all up there in LA. And there's a bunch of other people that we have contacts with and we've had long relationships with. So I did this two week stint on ESPN radio thinking literally it was just two weeks, fill in two weeks, make a couple bucks, no big deal. Get my name out and about as 1090s coming back on the air. And then that'll be the end of that. Well, the two weeks end and ESPN announces their new lineup with Keyshawn in the morning. And then uh, Mike Greenberg comes back to radio and Max Kellerman comes back to radio. Mason and Ireland moved to the middays and then Sedano comes on in the afternoon. And they're like, now as Keyshawn would say, the LA sports talk don't stop till 10 o'clock because Scott Kaplan is holding it down. You hear that, Browner? Keyshawn mm. said, I'm holding it down. Listen, listen. I he was paid it. to read that. Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> I heard that and went, ah, Keyshawn may have never met you. Um, Keyshawn and I go way back. Way, how way, back? way. Like how, to, how far? His rookie year. His rookie year in New York. Like we go way back. Um, seriously, it's totally true. Uh, because at the time I was working for CBS sports line and we were hosting Keyshawn Johnson's website. So back in those days, I would have Keyshawn on the radio every week so that we could provide content to his website, his Dude, own. You got to, every time you name drop, you got to do the Jay Farrow as Stephen A. Be like Keyshawn and me, we're like brothers. We are like, we brothers. share sweat rooms together. <laughs> Me and Keyshawn did the first interview after he told the world to give him the damn ball. I love Keyshawn. But in the fourth quarter <laughs> of an NBA basketball game. Anyway, so listen. Um, so all this 710 stuff, they, they asked me to do two weeks. I did. Then they said, hey, you know what? We want to keep it going at night. So w would you take a part-time deal? And I said, but, you know, I'm about to go back on 1090. And they said, we don't care. You're San Diego down there. You're LA up here. And I'm like, well, okay, so I can do both. And they were like, yeah. And I was like, well, then why pick one or the other? And then of course I got all the trolls coming at me, all the Twitter trolls, like five of them, you know, you're just like Dean Spanos, you sell out. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm exactly like Dean Spanos with one small difference. And it's a 
word that you might have heard of. It's called billions. See, he got billion, well, a billion dollars worth of net worth to his, to who he is. And I don't. So, you know, taking a gig part time in LA and telling me I'm the new Nick Hardwick or I'm the new Ladanian Tomlinson. LT? Yeah. LT? Mm hmm. I mean, yes, listen, so. man, you can, yes, you so. can go ahead and, and say you're not, but clearly you are, dude. Clearly, I mean, clearly. Obviously. Traitor. Traitor. I know. You are not loyal to the soil. Oh, my. Freaking, there is no love Judas. for a sellout. Oh. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else, but that's <laughs> it. You are one of them. One wow. of them. Wow. One of them. Wow. One of them. Do you think now, the next time I run into Sean Merriman, when we saw him at the Super Bowl and he wanted to beat me up, Mm -hmm. Do you think next time I run into Sean Merriman, he's going to be like, oh, you're one of us. And by the way, if I run into Sean Merriman and Nick Hardwick, just as I did on Radio Row, all caught on video where Sean Merriman physically intimidated me and put his hands on me. Physically intimidated or physically assaulted? I would say two different things. Try to intimidate. You might call it assault in some ways. In some no. ways. You ass Assault to salt, brother. It's either yeah. one or the other. Yeah. Really? It's like porn. It you is? You know it when you see it. What? Y'all never heard that saying before? No, not not in relation to what we're talking about. No, not really. I thought it was perfect. Okay. Well, anyway. So so Nick he's Hardwick. Gonna, he's going to, he's going to, this is Sean Merriman the next time you see him. Instead of okay. arm on the shoulder, for those of you watching, I'm intimating grabbing Scott's shoulder virtually. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be like this. Bring it in, bro. Bring it in for the sellout hug. Because oh. wasn't he already wasn't he already <laughs> communicating with you to try to I don't know bury the hat? He wished so him he could, luck. So he, could, he wished know, him he luck. Sean Merriman sent me a tweet saying, "Hey, I hear that you got this new gig on ESPN LA. Good luck, brother." You know what Sean Merriman should be to you on the ESPN 710 show? What should he be? Your NFL insider, weekly oh, guest. Yeah. Oh, weekly yeah. guest. Ooh. Oh yeah, Charger legend. Sean Merriman and lights are, out. Oh yeah, and people are like, "What?" I don't remember his career. Stop it, you hater, bro. Come on, not me, not me. I'm just saying the average guy driving around in L.A. at 9:30 at nights. Like, I don't know who Sean Merriman is. You're trying to make up. What are you doing? Be nice. 